So thank you for joining me on our community call for uh, this month. I had been um, going through some emails. I had been going through um, just some questions that that uh, women had asked me. And I started seeing this one question pop up and there's various forms of it. And it basically was, okay, Mo, I don't really know if my business is really my purpose right now, or if this is just a distraction. Once I could really know, if I could really know that my business was my purpose, then I'd be all in. I'd be all in. But since I don't, like I'm in this limbo of confusion, not having clarity, like mom guilt at times. And so um, I wanted to bring this discussion to the table because I think that it's an important view to um, have. The definition of distraction is the process of diverting the attention of an individual or a group from a desired area of focus, therefore blocking or dis diminishing the reception of desired information. Okay, I think we understand, you know, it's like lack of attention, lack of the ability to pay attention, lack of interest. Um, sometimes we can have uh, something new. It's like, oh, our head's turning. Oh, here's another new thing. Oh, maybe this, maybe that. That's a distraction, right? Purpose, purpose, the object toward which one strives for or for which one exists, it's an aim or a goal in life. Okay, as a transformational life coach, my job is to help you understand how you're making decisions. And 90 to 95% of the decisions that we make are made subconsciously. And according to um, research by Soon, S-O-O-N, he demonstrated that the brain is subconsciously aware of decisions before we have consciously made them. In other words, we've already come up with a decision or an answer before we've realized it. And so for many of us, we um, have like this feeling, oh, I have this feeling a gut intuition, right? And a lot of times that's our subconscious already having made the decision for us based on the information, experiences, and things that we've already been feeding our brain. It pulls that all together. Like it's filters everything and makes that decision for us to save time and energy instead of bring it to a conscious decision, right? That's why it's 90 to 95%. But that does not mean that we don't have any choice. It's not meaning like, oh, we're a robot and we have no ability to change what we're thinking. No, it means that we get to work at thinking about our thinking. And when the women would come and share that, that question, it was almost like they would whisper it, like feel like, oh my gosh. I'm in business, but I'm having this thought of, should I really be in business? Like there was some layers there of either like, is this making me a fake business person? Am I not like, if I was really a successful person, would I even have that thought? And so I wanted to be able to bring this conversation to the table to bring awareness on how we process some decisions. and help us to figure out, is it really our purpose or is it really a distraction? And how many of you know that all the answers here will probably be different or some level different, right? There's not going to be um, one thing where I'm like, okay, Mary, you've, you know what, you've got to get that book out and start selling it, right? Like, I can't tell you that. <laughs> I can't tell Shannon, like Shannon, okay, now you need to hire um, X amount of tax preparers for this upcoming season. Um, you know, I can't, but you can have a conversation with the Holy Spirit and understand where some of this decision-making with your business has happened. Has it happened based on um, 
what you grew up with. I want you to think about when you're even thinking about starting this business that you're currently doing, or if you don't have a business and you're, you know, you're thinking about what you're moving into. Um, did it just kind of happen? Like I, I, I seriously had, um, one business venture that I did. Um, it literally just fell into my lap and I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll try this. Like I never thought, Ooh, I never pursued it. Right. It just, it came to me and I learned a lot through it. <laughs> and some of it was awesome and I needed to learn it. Um, but it was just really interesting because at the time I was like, no, oh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going to try it and see where it goes. Or was it based, have, did you step into what you're doing right now based off of um, like a real financial need in your family? And you taking inventory on, you know what, I could do this. I'm, I'm equipped to this and this could help my family, right? Which that's how most of us start off in business is we want to be able to provide for our family. We want to be able to help our husbands or help um, our family um, have some leeway in, in, in the pressures of paying the bills and all that, some of the freedom there, right? nothing bad. I just want you to think about what you were feeling or thinking about when starting your business. Um, and then if you want to share any of that in the comments, please do, please, please share that. So when, um, oh, and I want to know, did anyone feel like, oh yes, this was, I know God told me this is my next step. God said, you know what? He told me for sure start this business. <laughs> uh, so the reason why um, I want to talk about that is because doubting whether or not you have made the right decision running or starting a business, um, it's actually normal. And what's in our control is what we do with the thought. Do we make that thought mean, what are we making that thought mean about us? Okay. So, um, if you don't have confidence that your business is what you're supposed to be doing in this season and, um, that this is the right, whatever, right or wrong, then you will self-sabotage. You will stay stuck. You will pile on mom guilt or you'll only half-heartedly show up for your business and you'll say, well, I'll try, I'll try this. This is why we're going to be walking through. Is this business or even thinking about this business, starting a new opportunity, is it my purpose or is it a distraction? So there's two things that um, when, I, when we're working with thoughts that I want my clients to know. Be open to the Holy Spirit and his leading. Our thoughts must align with God's thoughts. And I'll tell you, most of the time, mine don't. The Holy Spirit has to gently say, okay, eh, this is not what my word says, Mo. <laughs> but he gently does it, right? So be open to his leading, okay? And the second one is as we are just observing maybe how we made some decisions or what we're thinking, is to be objective and not heap any shame, guilt, or condemnation on yourself. Because that's so easy to do. Like, oh my goodness, I shouldn't be thinking that. I should not. I should have done this, right? So um, those are the two things I want you to remember as we're kind of just, I'll throw out some prompts here as we're thinking through things that be open to the Holy Spirit and be objective as you're looking at your thoughts, right? No need to have shame, guilt for any of that, anything. We're like our own detectives here. So um, Liz said that she started life coaching training because she saw a few women who seem happy and fulfilled. And she thought, whatever they're doing, I want that. And now um, she sees the changes provided by life coaching. And she can see so many other women are feeling the same way she was. And she wants, to ex and she wants them to experience uh, that freedom that she's come to know. That is so awesome. And you know what? It's like you started it first because you you saw someone happy and fulfilled. 
you actually didn't have the desire to help other people in freedom, right? You started it for that first part of, I want to feel happy and fulfilled. And then Ashley said that she, when she saw the Revelation Wellness Instructor Training, um, she knew it. She just knew it was for her. And creating a business from it is wishy-washy for her right now. She's still not sure which way to go with it. Personal training, she's pursuing it because it aligns what she's already doing um, and it will enhance. But she's still in the, I don't know, I Lord, is this my purpose? Or is it just a distraction? Um, and Shannon said she had a couple of reasons for starting her business. And one was to have money coming in to help support her household. And two was that she could see how um, God can work through her business to help others operate their business in a way that took the heart out of it, which what I, that's what I love about Shannon. She helps with um, all the bookkeeping, accounting tax. She knows all that kind of stuff. Um, and Mary says she wants to share her story to give hope. Like Mary's writing a book or two or five. I don't remember how many you told me. <laughs> and for many of us, when we start wondering, is this business my purpose or a, just a distraction? We need to ask ourselves, what's going on right now in my life that's bringing this question up? Is it the Holy Spirit? Because he could, he could be asking you that to just solidify for sure, like motives, right? But then a lot of times this question will also come up um, because of circumstances. So for example, like a new transition in our life, um, it could be the business is not producing the results that you think it should. So then you're questioning, is this really a good use of my time? Is this really my purpose? It's not looking like I thought it would if this was my purpose. Like, God, if you really called me to this, it should look like X, Y, and Z, right? I mean, how many of you have ever done that before? And then you look at the circumstances to say, see, it's not working, God. It must have made a wrong decision. <laughs> um, sometimes we, this question will pop up because our business is doing extremely well. And when we think about how well it's expanding, we freak out about how can I keep up with the growth, right? And so then it becomes like, Ooh, is this really my purpose or is this a distraction? Because if I grow so much, that's going to take more of my energy and my time and time away from my family. So Surely that can't be my purpose, right, God? And so recognizing, hey, what is bringing this question up? What's bringing this question up? It actually says, or others say, look, it's not X, Y, and Z. Yes, others' expectations for your business and their input, right? And so um, we need to understand why this question is popping up and be able to discern, is this the Holy Spirit's prompting? And it could be that he prompts us with a question so that we will seek him, seek the Lord, seek his word and have those confirmations in our heart that we know what the next one step is. I have found rarely does the Lord give me 10 steps ahead. Usually it's one. And I'm like, okay, Lord, it'd be super helpful if you gave me two more so I can make sure this one step I'm taking is the right step. But he's like, no, <laughs> do this one step. And um, it reminds me of Exodus in chapter 14. So um, Moses, I'm going to read this. Um, Moses had to lead the Jews out of Egypt to safety by parting the Red Sea. Um, and uh, in Exodus 14, 15, he says, and the Lord said to Moses, tell the people of Israel to march forward and um, then lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide it. The thing to note is Moses is instructed um, to raise the rod to divide the sea only after telling the people to march forth in the water. I mean, have you ever thought about that? Because a lot of times in the Bible, like children's books, they already show the picture of the water, the Red Sea being parted, right? 
they had to actually march forward with that huge obstacle, that river in the way. And they had to take that step before knowing how God was going to provide for them in it. And that's what I have found with our business um, that we have to take action first. We have to take that first step. And through taking that step, it allows us to see the provision of God for the next step. And that's the faith part. It takes faith to take that step because I would rather know and have an index card from God drop from heaven saying, Mo, you are to start this business, do this, do this, do it this way in, in this amount of time, right? I would love that. But actually, that is not a God's character because that would mean he, we wouldn't need a relationship. He would just give us a, here's your thing, right? He desires to have a relationship with us. And so when we're thinking about, is our business our purpose or our distraction? You know, we need to first, why is this bubbling up right now for me? Um, and so the main, I want to just reiterate a couple things. If you've been with me and you've probably heard some of these concepts in the first one, like when we are in transition, when we're starting something new, it freaks our brain out. It does not feel safe. And the brain's job is to keep us safe. It's not to help us succeed. It's to keep us safe. God wired our brain for safety, not our success. And so when we are starting something new or in a new transition or not sure the next step to take in our business, our brain starts freaking out. Or we even think we do know the next step, but it's so new that our brain starts freaking out. And so that's, we call that our like our cave brain. That's our safety brain that is protecting us. And so we don't recognize though that a lot of our decisions are made from that portion of our brain our safety mechanism brain. Um, and so questions that might, not questions, but thoughts that might pop up are like, I can't fully commit until I know this is my purpose. Or I'm not a good mom if I work my business because I know my family is my purpose. Um, and so this type of thinking can be a self-defense mechanism. It causes confusion, right? You're, you're, it's like stalemate, like, oh my gosh, we're stuck. I need to know for sure that this is my purpose before I can take the next step. So it causes confusion. Confusion causes inaction. Inaction allows one to stay in the familiar, which is the area the brain deems as safe. So is this question coming up as a safety mechanism of my brain? Because it's saying, I, this is the one thing I have to have in place in order to move forward. And so that, that is like, I either, it either has to be my purpose or it is a distraction. It either is my purpose and this is the right step to take, or it is not my purpose and this is the wrong step to take. So that is called black and white thinking. Black and white thinking is a typical survival brain mechanism. If you have dealt with any trauma, big trauma, little trauma, um, any anxiety, depression, um, any of any of like those type of things. Black and white thinking has been a survival mechanism for safety for you. And so then it becomes a default way of thinking. And the way it, it helped protect you, like, okay, I have to know for sure if I'm going to be hurt by this or not, because I was hurt by X, Y, and Z, and I have to make sure I'm okay. And so black and white thinking shows up all the time. I'll either take care of my family or I'll take care of business. This is either my purpose or it's a waste of time. This is either a good decision or it's a bad decision. 
I have to have all the external conditions be 100% perfect to complete this task or else it's not the right thing to do. So the black and white thinking is also part of that survival mechanism. So is this question of, is my business my purpose or distraction? Is it bubbling up? Like, am I making it this black and white thing or could it really be a shade of gray in between there? Could at times my business be a distraction? Could at times my business be my purpose? How would you know? So first of all, let's tackle, because your brain is thinking purpose. It's like this big thing. You know, everyone's like, I need to find my purpose in life. What's my purpose? Um, I need clarity on my purpose. Like that becomes an excuse for not doing anything. It really does. Because you know how you find out your purpose? You find out your purpose by ac action. So first of all, purpose, this purpose could be a whole other session. And maybe it will be in the, in, down the road, especially if anyone has more questions coming up. But um, well, I like to think of it as like, we've got the macro purpose, the big purpose, and then you have your micro purpose, your own individual purpose. So the macro for us as Christians is everything I do brings glory to God and makes him known. Like that is the macro, the big picture. Whatever I'm doing is for his glory. And the purpose is to make him known. Now, the micro purpose is how God's uniquely designed you with your gifts, talents, experiences to serve others. He's created you to uniquely get in front of specific groups of people. And some of that is through your experiences. Can you say the micro again? I'm sorry. So the micro is um, like that. This is how we are uniquely wired and designed to serve others. And that is uniquely. Each of us is, have our own unique expression of that. And so um, with purpose, um, we know as women, family is part of our purpose, but yet we also have this opportunity to express serving others with our skills and talents through entrepreneurship. Now our brain likes to go, okay, I can't serve my family and business and and it be equal because it, it, it wants to default to black and white thinking because that is a safety mechanism, right? But that's when we have to ask the Holy Spirit, okay, show me the shade, shades of gray. Is it 100% true that if I'm working my business, I'm neglecting my family? No, it's not, you know, honestly, when I'm working my business, my kids are seeing me use some of the gifts and talents that God is giving me. And they're, they're learning how to be able to use their talents to serve others because they see mom or dad stepping into that, right? So um, business can be a way to serve our family and others. But when we think of purpose, our brains like hones in and says, what is the one purpose of my life? I've got to either get it wrong or I have to either get it right or else I've missed the mark, right? And that is very confining. That's constricting. That's very heavy to think that. Like I'm either going to miss, I'm going to miss out on my purpose. And so then you spend all your time stuck in, um, almost few, like, what if thinking, like, what if this is not my purpose? What if this is my purpose? What is it? Ugh, and it's just this ugh, back and forth, right? And you use all your energy 
on something that is producing no results and is actually a safety mechanism, rather than having a view of purpose being relational. When I surrender my idea of purpose to the Lord, and I'm having this, these conversations with him, and I'm reading his word, guess what? He shows me what my purpose is in this season. And purpose in one season can look different than purpose in another season. So for an example, um, in, okay, I'm, I'm young. I'm only like, what, 30? No, I'm kidding. Um, I've got grown kids, you guys. I have grown kids and then I have kids still at home. And so sometimes like my younger kid, my youngest is nine and his friends have no idea he has three other grown siblings, a part of the family, because they never see them together, right? So way back when my older kids were little, one of the things that I did was I used to teach scrapbooking classes in um, at scrapbooking expos, in scrapbooking stores. I would travel it all over and do those. Loved it, loved it. And that's what I did for happy money. I wouldn't say I was, uh, it was a full blown job, <laughs> but I did make money doing it. And, um, it was great, but that was for that season. And I remember like you guys, this is one of the few times where I actually knew I was to step into this, but this is what it looked like. Um, I was listening to a radio show where, um, creative memories, a creative memories consultant created a, um, 50 year, uh, a 50 wedding anniversary photo album for a couple. And I was like, Oh, oh my gosh. I'd never really heard of scrapbooking. I'm like, I love that. That is arts and crafts with a purpose because I was doing arts and crafts for like no reason. I wasn't selling them. I was just bored. We'd hang out with my friends. We'd be like, okay, what do we want to do today? Oh, let's paint flower pots. And we wouldn't really do anything. Like I felt like a, a, a 10 year old bringing things to my mom. I was married. I'm like here, mom, look, I painted this flower pot. Like we just would do it to hang out. But then when I heard about the scrapbooking thing, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crafting with a purpose. And I felt like when I had that thought, there was such an energy in me that I knew was the Holy Spirit that said, pursue this. I didn't pursue it as business. I pursued it as um, doing crafts with friends with a purpose, right? And it's so interesting that I took the step in my little tiny town, there was, there was actually a creative memories consultant. And honestly, those monthly crops that we had were a lifeline for me as a young mom who was very lonely, thousands of miles away from my family. And God placed me in community with people. That lady was running a business. She served me, but she was like, she was selling scrapbooking. She had no clue that her opening up her house for scrapbooking was meeting such an emotional, spiritual, and relational need of mine. And the cool thing is through that, like I never became a creative memories consultant, but um, through that, I ended up working in the scrapbooking industry. Like God did that. And I still have, like today I'm still like, okay, did I fully, and this is where we have to watch how our brain works because I'll sometimes say, did I fully accomplish the purpose in that season that you had for scrapbooking for me? Because I had never had it like such, so confirmed in me to start scrapbooking, but yet like, I mean, I didn't build a business really. I worked with the magazine, but here's the thing. In that season, that was my purpose. I was to be designing, editing, um, teaching because all those skills led me to where I am today. I got all that experience, all those connections, the good experiences and bad. But that scrapbooking, guess what? My poor nine-year-old is the only kid without a scrapbook. <laughs> it is not my purpose anymore. And so to be so stuck on this 
the black and white thinking of, I only have one purpose in life and I have to find it. It's almost the same idea of, I have to find the one true soulmate in my life or else I've, I missed out. That is not truth. That is not truth at all. And so the purpose part is we have to help our brain say, okay, wait, is this black and white thinking? Or is my purpose in this season to serve through my business in this capacity, in this way? And it could switch, you guys. It's not always going to look the same. Liz has not always been a life coach. Michelle hasn't always stepped into um, mentoring and coaching and working with homeschool families. Like Ashley wasn't always a fitness instructor. Like there are different purposes in different seasons, but the, the, the um, big purpose never changes to glorify God and make him known. And he uses our gifts and talents to serve others. In our business, and this is where we have to have just sit through, because if our brain is trying to pull and say, I'm either working my business or I'm working family, like that's black and white thinking. And it's really interesting because um, black and white thinking causes a lot of confusion. And who is the author of confusion? Yeah, Satan is the author often author of confusion god is both and he's both the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end he's the first and the last he's the one who can bring those two together your business isn't on some separate entity that is separate from your family your business if you're doing it with um, the heart of, I am wanting to glorify God, make him known and serve others becomes also the way that you serve your family. And so then it's not an either, or it's like, it is a together. It's a both and. And so, um, when we operate our business as a way to serve others, we have to rely on God. We have to, um, we have to interact with people which is God's heart. God's heart is to um, have relationships with people. So he has created us to have relationships with people and business allows us to have relationships with people. Business or your books, or um, even if you're in a nonprofit or a ministry, right? All those specific things give you unique opportunities to be in front of people you had never been in front of if you didn't step out in this arena. So in Ephesians 2, verse 10, um, it says, we are his workmanship created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He's prepared us for good works. And so this is also where is my business, my purpose or my distraction? We have to be willing to go through our junk our junk of what we make business mean. What have others in our lives told us that business mean? What has media told us that business means? Maybe even my own experiences. Maybe you had a mom who worked away from home and you felt neglected, or um, maybe you had a dad who worked too much and um, was never home, or maybe you had some good examples of business, right? You've got, we've got to unpack what your brain is telling you business is, because we all know our highest priority is to love the Lord and then steward what he's given us. And our family is not just a thing. It is part of our main purpose because God created families. He created, created families, right? But our brain wants to say, okay, that is our one purpose as mothers is to take care of our family. And it has to look this way. Unpack all that. What does it really have to look like? What am I making it look like? 
And then, so then it's saying, okay, business is too much. Like I can't add another thing on my plate. Business is too much. So maybe it's not my purpose at all. And so that's where we get to step in and say, okay, Holy Spirit, show me my thoughts. Where are all these subconscious things coming from? Because they're coming from what has been fed into you through your experiences in your past. What you're feeding yourself by what you listen to, what you watch, all that impacts our subconscious. And so um, Ashley says, I'm realizing I make it about me. And he told me a few weeks ago, it's not all up, up, up to me, but I keep forgetting it. it's all about him. Yes. And so we're going to get to that because that is not just unique a unique Ashley problem. <laughs> uh, how many of you have made it about you, made business about you? Yeah, yeah. It is not a unique Ashley problem. It is a unique all of our problem. So we do have a responsibility though to take ownership of where we are in our business. And part of that is really um, understanding, having an understanding of the season God has us in now and what he wants us to do in that season. So how do you know it's a distraction? Because business can be a distraction. You have probably seen it modeled as a distraction. We've seen it in movies. You might've experienced it um, in family members that they have, they used business as a distraction. So you know when it's a distraction when you use work to validate your self-worth and your identity. You know it's a distraction when you use work to avoid parenting because it's too difficult and you'd rather not deal with the negative emotions and all that kind of stuff, or to avoid interacting with a spouse or another family member because, you know what, working is just a lot easier than navigating all those relationship stuff. So you know work is a distraction then. Work is a distraction when you use it to try to fix your circumstances. What do I mean by that? Many of us started our businesses to be able to bring in some finances to help alleviate some of the stress of the financial stuff in the family, right? That's great. That's part of why businesses are, we create businesses, right? But when we look at our business solely to fix everything, and then it becomes this pressure of, I have to perform. I have to make this work. It has to produce money like this. It need like this pressure that is a distraction because you're looking at your business as being your source instead of God being the source and your business a resource. It can be a distraction when the newness wears off because you got that dopamine hit for starting something new and then you're like, okay, what's the next new thing I should start? So have you ever met someone who's been a serial entrepreneur? Yeah, that's usually it. It's like they get the dopamine hit of the new and then once the newness wears off, they're like, uh, I'm not feeling that, that happiness stuff. So it must be wrong. Let me go see, maybe this one's the right thing. Maybe this one's the right thing. And here's the thing, can your business be both your purpose and a distraction at the same time? Yeah, it sure can. It sure can. So questions to ask. In this season of life, am I trying to fix things through my business? like fix my finances, fix my self-worth, fix other people. Am I using my business in any degree to avoid something I know God has told me to do? And so I mean by any degree, because um, sometimes our business can fully, like I said, our business can be our purpose and a distraction. And there could be parts of our business that God might be asking us to let go or to reframe or to delegate, right? 
Um, but we like it. Like it gives us a dopamine hit because we're helping people a certain way in that area. But he's saying, uh, that's a done season there. But sometimes what we're doing, it could be even be producing successful results, right? But if we're using our business to avoid something that God's told us to do, then it's a distraction. Also think about, how is my business working for my family? Because your brain always wants to go like, oh no, it's taking from my family. If I'm working my business, then I don't have enough energy for my family. I'm using the resources for my family to fund my business if you're starting up. Um, all these things, right? And then it's like, oh no, this must be not right. But how is your business working for your family? What is it allowing you to do? And it's more than finances. But I'll tell you what, finances um, are part of the way that God wired business. It's a reward for serving people well. Now, we see it modeled done poorly through media and all that kind of stuff. But when we know that our main purpose is to glorify God in whatever we do and to serve other people, Money is just the um, paper that shows us how many people we've served well. And then another question is, how might the information that I've stored during my lifetime, you know, my childhood experiences, my early college experiences, whatever, how might all those things be holding me back from having the life I want right now? Specifically, what was I making business mean? What was I telling myself that if I'm doing business, that as a Christian woman, maybe it should look this way or not this way, or were there shoulds and expectations that I was holding or as a mother. So um, Jordan Rayner writes, he's written many good books. So if you want to read a little bit more on a book, like go a little bit more in depth on purpose, he wrote a book called The Master of One. And I love this quote that he shared because he was talking about um, C.S. Lewis. And he said, C.S. Lewis's faith didn't change his work. It changed his relationship to his work. Lewis allowed the Lordship of Jesus Christ to impact his motivations for creating what he created and how he created. Because God wired us to create. And part of what we create in our business serves others, that service. And God's heart is for us to be serving others. Now, depending on what you're experiences and exposures are to that term service, there might be some things you have to unpack on what that looks like. For some, if you're in ministry or if you are a, um, like if you're doing business as a Christian and you have more ministry type opportunities, there might be junk you have to unpack about charging. And what, th what that means, can I really serve people in charge? You, that, you're going to have to unpack that. What are you making money to mean? What are you making charging to mean? Because money is just a value exchange. And the transaction happens when you actually exchange. The value transaction happens when you exchange money. That you have an offer, a way to help people, person has a need, 
when you are able to share your offer or your service or your book, that purpose, that person has the option to say, you know what, that's not for me. Or yes, that is for me. And the tra the value transaction happens when the money is handed over. And I believe that God created business. He created business so that we'll be relational and still have the ability to care for our family and provide. My heart is to see Christian entrepreneurs flooding the world with creative, innovative, God-ordained solutions for their pain right now. Our world needs it. And so getting to the heart of what when this question comes up, because it comes up in a lot of different forms, is important. It is important. Is this my cave brain thinking? Is this black and white thinking? Am I, is there, am I using my business? Like it could be your purpose, but you could be using it as distraction to avoid stuff. A lot of times in business, I will say the distractions come when we know the actual business step we should take and that's uncomfortable. So we distract ourselves doing Canva or um, writing a blog post or something instead of actually having the conversation with someone we're supposed to have, right? That's where I find my distractions are. <laughs> God's like, um, you're supposed to be relational and you're hiding behind um, Instagram photos only, <laughs> which there's a purpose for all that. But what I'm saying is, your business can be a purpose, your purpose, and it could be a distraction. And the, the key thing, listening to the Holy Spirit, he can alert you to the distractions. So this October, one of the things that I am doing is I am running the Mompreneur Mindset course, and we are covering some of this in the form of, you know, we need to take ownership. And what we talked about here is getting us to a point of, okay, am I owning that I actually am a businesswoman? I actually am an author. Am I owning it? Or, I st or am I still in the, I'm trying this out. And so in the Mompreneur Mindset Lab, we are talking about ownership. We're talking about knowing our values because that also, um, Help that also is an important piece of decision making. The Mompreneur Mindset Lab is really structured around how we make decisions for our family in our business. It's like foundational for starting, um, just solidifying, I would say. The I can do, I can be a great mom and a great business um, owner because they, they're both in, right? We're going to talk about obstacles, a lot of other mindset obstacles just like this that come up when we are operating our business and trying to um, love our family well. We're going to talk about how we make decisions, how we take actions and how we grow. And in October, this it's starting next week, um, we'll have a group call for the for three for the rest of the um, October. So three sessions which that's a bonus because normally it's just a self-paced class. But my heart is, I don't want um, anyone to just have knowledge. I want you to apply it. Knowledge is at our fingertips. Like we can Google half, half the things, but knowledge doesn't change us until we apply it. Same with God's word. It's like, if you just gather up information about him, but never apply it and have a relationship with him, it doesn't change you. So this is an opportunity. If you know someone who is starting their business or a mom in business, share this with them. But this question is 
part of us taking ownership of what season we're in and what, what God wants us to do in this season. And so we have to answer this question for ourselves. Like, I can't answer this question for you. I can't tell you, Agnieszka, God says your business is your purpose. Like, I can't tell you that. But the Holy Spirit can confirm, yes, this is the one way I want you to serve people right now. Or this is one of the ways I want you to serve people right now. Take one step. Take the next step. And it's interesting when you are serving others through your business, um, through your nonprofit, even through ministry, the more action you take, the more you're actually, in, actually interacting with people, sometimes the clearer your purpose in that season becomes. We want to know it all ahead of time. Drop me the index card ahead of time, God. Then I will make the decision. He's countercultural here. He's like, take this one step in faith, trust me, and guess what? As you're working it out and walking it out, I'll reveal it to you. Because a lot of it has to come through our experience. And sometimes the purpose in the next season that's coming for you depends on the experiences you have in this season. Well, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I look forward to seeing you around either um, in our group or in future calls in October here. And so uh, thank you for spending your afternoon with us. And um, I look forward to chatting with you guys soon. Take care.